Some say that the death penalty is the worst fate that a person can face, but this song proves that there is something worse. A song by Miracle Music beautifully gives you a first person view of someone before they meet their faith on their electric chair. We hear beautiful lyrics cursed by imminent death. Join me as we take a look at Tally Halley's description of an electric death. Now, me personally, I'm never afraid to listen to new genres of music. My song options are really open, and I'm never one to shy away from music. But this song seems to have its own genre, and it's crafted like a puzzle that has out-of-place pieces that are just impossible to fit together. The name of the song that I'm talking about is The Mind Electric by Miracle Music. I listened to the whole album by the name of... I'm not even going to tap that. <laughs> one thing I've noticed about... Miracle Music is that their use of effects and sounds, like, they use every sound effect in the music software that they bought. And their lyrics are, my god, I could probably analyze every song on the album, but today we're just gonna focus on one. The Mind Electric. On to the lyrics! <laughs> These thoughts as limitless light Exposing, closing, circuitry to fight Think of each moment holding this breath As death minute and decimal Resident Miner, how do you call me? We'll need your testimony on the stand From this word, it's for the hopes in the soul of the sun I'll raise your right hand The best songs are written through story and the story of a man about to face the electric chair is the one that keeps us all listening in on the edge of our seats. The first few lyrics where he is saying, Think of these thoughts of lim limitless light exposing closing circuits of fright. Think of each breast holding this breath as death is in a decimal. These first few lyrics we hear a voice of a man telling us that his thoughts are racing fast in his head, exposing his deepest thoughts and putting him in a state of worry. I feel like these are his last moments and he is remembering every death before his imminent death. After that, we go to a darker figure asking the man a typical thing that is asked in a court. How do you plead, tell us nothing but the truth, raise your right hand, etc. Which obviously means he's being tried for the crimes he's committed. Father, your honor, may I explain my brain has claimed its glory over me. I've a good heart, albeit insane. In this lyric, we take a deeper dive into who this man is. He tells a judge that he has a good heart, but his brain is in full control of his action and he doesn't mean to do all the bad things that he does. Meaning that this man is not an innocent man and he's done some fucked up shit that he has no control over. He is obviously insane or mentally ill. Which is why they send them to the infirmary. An infirmary is a place where sick people receive treatment or help. But by the way the judge says it, I think it's not a good place where the man would like to go. All my towers crumble down the flowers gasping under rubble Striking in the wall of all thy genius states of thirst for Scattering sparks of thought energy deliver me and carry me away. Here in my kingdom, I am no more. I order you to power and pray. In these next lines, the music and sound takes a dive, and I interpret it as a man who is reacting to being sentenced to the chair. The world around him is being destroyed, and a hall where he's supposed to be alone, he is smart enough to know that he's in trouble. The lyrics go back to a more calming melody and he is most likely greeted by a priest as most cases priests will arrive so that inmates facing death penalty can repent. He's asking them to deliver him away but the priest or whoever he's talking to is telling them that this is his kingdom and he should start to pray. Another way I interpret these lines is that the man is asking for a priest so that he can repent but the warden or anyone who is in charge of him is telling him that he is God since he is the person in charge of his death that if he wants to talk to God, he should start praying. Majesty, 
I beg of thee, have mercy on me. I was just a boy, you see. I plead of thee, have sympathy for me. We meet the line where he finally meets his death. As highlighted in the line, lightning strikes my temple. He's meeting his death and is in full conscious of it. I love the line where he repeats the word so, spiraling down the majesty. As he's spiraling through death while he's being electrocuted and is stuttering the word so, while his body is being shocked into a crisp. He begs them to have mercy on him, but they show no sympathy towards him, highlighting the line, I plead thee have sympathy on me, I was just the boy you see. <laughs> line I see it as the electric chair didn't work he was screaming he was screaming asking people to help him the fear that he was feeling would be something that people wouldn't understand in his mind and he tells the doctor I don't know if I'm not me he's questioning if what's happened he's questioning what happened so the song ends with him going back to his soul as he made it through another night he has never been calmed by the filled electric chair the seat of death shocked and marveled everyone that was expecting him to see him dead. And he got to sleep that night knowing that he got to breathe another night. So put together, what does this all mean? I mean, is this a true story? If it is, who survives the electric chair? Well, after some investigating, I came to the conclusion that this song is about Willie Francis, the first man to survive the electric chair. The song fits perfectly with his story. Willie was a famous man who was known for surviving the electric chair. He was charged with the murder of Andrew Thomas and was sentenced to death. The reason why he killed Andrew Thomas is because he molested Willie when he was younger and he was forced into the electric chair. But due to faulty wiring, he survived the chair. In the song, we learn about a man just like Willie, who was misplaced and had no control of his mind just like how Andrew killed, I mean, just like Willie killed Andrew with his mind and his rage, even though his heart was in the right place. But to the people, he still committed a crime and was sentenced to death. But somehow he survives the chair, like in the song, and is able to survive another night, like he says at the end of the song. Maybe I'm speculating too much, but honestly, this song fits perfectly with the story of Willie. What do you guys think? Do you think I analyzed it right? How did you guys interpret the song? With new videos being uploaded every week, make sure you subscribe to El Lobo, and I will see you guys later. Have a good night.